Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog. I look and sound absolutely ridiculous in this video and I just want people to know, yes, I am sick, but I actually, aside from the fact that I have no voice and I occasionally get blocked up in my sinuses because <laughs> you hate COVID, I actually feel fine. I have these massive bursts of energy and so I decided to film this vlog because I'm going to be doing something that's, you know, part of a, a video series <laughs> anyway so i might as well film it while i'm doing it by the time this video goes up anyway i should be past the worst of everything it, it should probably be a couple of weeks later anyway so hopefully you can bear with my ridiculous voice and we can do this video i thought i would do another try chapter tag and tracy had suggested that i do a try chapter tag but an audiobook version of that so that is what i'm going to do so i'm opening up libby because libby is where i keep all of my audiobooks. So how many things do I have in here? One, two, three, four, five. That can't be all of them. Maybe it is. I've only got five. Okay. That makes it easier. I thought I had more books in here. What I have is... I have What Feasts at Night by T. King Fisher, which would be a reread, an audio reread. I have A Power Unbound by Freya Mask, which is the third book in a series. So I've read the other two books on audiobook through Libby. Possibly not the best choice because they're fantasy, historical fantasy romance books, and that doesn't always compute with my brain. So we'll try that today, but if I, uh, I'd be surprised if I pick that because... I don't know how I will cope with it. Scar Town by Tristan Banks, which is an Australian middle fiction title. Looks like older middle fiction early young adult and how to say Babylon by Sophia Sinclair so I have a bunch of things that I'm going to do it's actually really early because I kept waking up and just not being able to go back to sleep so I'm like well it's seven o'clock let's just get up and do some things if I need to nap later I need to nap later I'm going to change the sheets on the bed I'm going to put on a load of laundry I've got some editing to do today and throughout that we're going to listen to the first chapter of each book and I will give you my thoughts so come along on this journey with me Hi guys, so this is Steph later in the video, uh, or later in the day, just coming back at the start of this video to say that the very first book that I listened to in this vlog is a St. Martin's Press title, which I did not realise until I was halfway through reading the book. So I am going to finish it because I'm enjoying it. It's a, it, The book itself is great and I don't think the author should, just, should be punished for the fact that St. Martin's Press is unable to make a apology. That said, there's a bunch of footage and stuff that I'm just going to cut out, so please just be mindful of that. There's, I'm really annoyed. I'm really annoyed because generally speaking I haven't really picked up any St. Martin's Press books and it just sucks that the one that I am really enjoying is one of their books. All right, so I've just listened to the first chapter of What Feasts at Night. I think I called it What Moves the Dead Before, which is book one. Uh, yes, that would be the brain fog. But yeah, the audiobook is great. Obviously, I know this story, so I didn't have to concentrate quite as hard on exactly what was going on because it is Alex Easton going back home. And when Alex gets there, they find that their groundskeeper is not there, which is very unusual. And so a big part of the first part of the story is trying to figure out where the groundskeeper is. And it's all creepy and gothic and all that sort of thing. Uh, Cloud Quinn is the audio narrator. It was good. I, like I said, this audiobook is only four hours long. So if nothing else, that's a reread and a, um, and a quick one to put on in the background if I'm doing things today. But we are going to keep going with our try chapter and we are going to go with A Power Unbound by Freya Mask. Now, does it tell me who the narrator is? No, why does it not tell me who that is? All right, let's look it up. Uh, Josh Dillon. And this one is Lord Hawthorne, who's been a side character in previous books. Let's listen to the first chapter. Why does this one not have chapters? It just has 969 minutes. That's 16 hours. All right, let, I'm going to listen through to the end of the first chapter. And we'll see how I go. A Power Unbound by Freya Mask. All right, so I just finished the first chapter of A Power Unbound by Freya Mask. The audio narrator is Josh Dillon. And the opening chapter is sort of a flashback to when Lord Hawthorne's twin sister died. And it involves some things that have been going on in the series, including 
the transference of power because this is a historical fantasy ish world where people have magic and the old families have a lot of magic and Lord Hawthorne and his twin sister are tricked into almost giving up all of their magic to someone else and it results in his sister's death and he is bound and unable to talk about what happened so I suspect that the following chapter is going to deal with the aftermath of that because so far Lord Hawthorne's sort of just been this side character who's helped other characters along their their own adventures but he has possibly been the most intriguing character for me in the series so that is a, another distinct possibility. I do have it for like another 16 days so I might maybe not today but maybe next week. The next one I have is Scar Town by Tristan Banks so as I said this is well it was on the middle fiction shortlist for the CBCA awards for 2024 but I uh, the main character is 12 so it's sort of that borderline middle fiction and young early young adult sort of category and I don't really know anything about this although I know Tristan Banks is meant to be a fantastic author so I'm going to find out who the narrator is we're going to listen to the first chapter of Scar Town huh Tristan Banks is the narrator that's awesome I do love it when the author narrates their own story which happens a lot I've noticed in Australian children's fiction audiobooks so okay let's do this so I listened to the first well the prologue and the first chapter of Scar Town by Tristan Banks. It is the story of Will and his friends who have stumbled across a house that has been previously drowned, it must be in a lake, and the water level has slowly been falling so the house has been emerging and he and his friends are arriving at the scene. They're planning on, well they're trying to dare each other I think, to go in and investigate this strange house that has appeared and it's sort of, the chapter leaves off on a bit of a cliffhanger so you you want to keep reading very intriguing and what I said earlier about Australian narrators there there is a very distinct accent style I notice it more may and maybe it's just because I don't get to hear that as often when I'm listening to or watching media um because a lot of the things I watch aren't necessarily Australian which I know is bad but I'm going to watch what I want to watch so I'm I'm really curious I will be reading that regardless in the next week or so because I'm going to be reviewing all of the titles that are in the shortlist for the younger readers category which is the middle fiction category so that's going to be read regardless of whether I read it for this vlog or not but that brings us to our last book which is How to Say Babylon by Sophia Sinclair which is a memoir a Jamaican memoir and it is narrated by the author so let's get into it so I finished the first oh uh, well there's there's a kind of couple of little bits and pieces at the start of the book plus the first chapter of how to say Babylon. Sorry if you can hear the noise outside. I've opened up the door because I just I need fresh air. And it's really interesting actually because I don't know that much about Jamaican history uh, because like many colonized countries Australia is terrible at teaching our own history let alone anyone else's uh, unless it's white history. So I think this is going to be a really interesting story because Sophia is talking initially about how her father came to be involved in the Rastafari movement and if I'm saying that incorrectly as I said very new to me learning about it as I go yeah it's fascinating and she just has such a beautiful easy to listen to voice uh, I did a quick search and apparently she's also a poet which makes sense the way she uses language the way she phrases things is very lovely to listen to even when the subject matter is difficult or tough I don't think I'm going to read this one today. I don't think I'm in the right headspace for it quite yet, but definitely, definitely very soon this is going to be something that I finish listening to. Am I annoyed that I got halfway through a book before realizing it was a St. Martin's Press title and therefore I'm not going to be including it in this vlog? Yeah, I'm annoyed because I was actually enjoying that book. But anyway, that's fine. Neither here nor there. If they get their act together, I'll talk about it at a later date. So I have decided that what I will read is What Moves the Dead by Taking Fisher because I've already read it, it'll be a nice easy read and while we are listening to that I'm gonna keep working on the friendship bracelets. I've been making some for the upcoming hockey season for my team so we're gonna do those. I'm gonna be using my black and orange uh, and I had one that I started making and then it fell apart on me. So yeah, we're gonna listen to the rest of what moves the dead <laughs> why can i not say this title i can't even I can't even blame covid brain for this honestly like it's it can't be that <laughs> what feasts at night what feasts at night i'm even holding the damn book okay i'm gonna do a bit of crafting and just 
recent of myself. So I just finished what feasts at night. I've been making bracelets the entire time while listening to it. I think I filmed the first one, which is my Mustangs one. So this was our goalie from, well, our import goalie from last year, Liam Hughes, to go along with my other collection. So these are all the other ones that I've made so far. So today I literally just got the code for the streaming service that the Australian Ice Hockey League uses. So I finally have access to the games again from last year, which is great because I've been wanting to rewatch a couple of the games that I went to that I really enjoyed because there were some really funny moments in there. So I can do that later. But yes, so far I have made this many bracelets for the upcoming season. Why? Because I felt like it. These are the bracelets that I had made previously. I think I showed some of these in my last hockey vlog when I went to the Trans Tasman. These were the Australia ice hockey bracelets that I made. These were some that I made for work, including our school values, plus a school colored one using our uniform colors, and a year two one. I made a pride bracelet and an ace pride bracelet. I also made a free Palestine badge. It has a little watermelon on it. And then I had the brilliant idea that for all of my five and six star reads this year, I could make bracelets for them. So prior to today, I had made six. So the very first one that I made was Inner Jam because the color scheme was easy. So I'm using the cover of the book as inspiration. I also had to make a rest of the story one, which I just used the pinks and purples, which is sort of like the sunrise sunset color on the cover. I made an only for the week one, which I really like. I also like my one for You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I just like the colors. I also made one for Salt Kiss. This was another one that was fairly easy to match the colors of for the beads that I had as well as Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, and this one I added some charms to. I'm still waiting for the um, the upcoming roster for the team, so I figured I'd just do the Hughes bracelet because I already started it and it had fallen apart, so I was just fixing it really. So I made some more of my five and six star read books. This isn't a this year read, although I'm really tempted to go back and, and reread it. I made a pucking around bracelet. I just did it in sort of the teal blue that is on the cover, but I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. There are four little hearts on either side of the title. So that's one for each member of the polyamorous family in the story. I also made one for Six Summers to Fall by C.W. Farnsworth. This one I just was kind of inspired by the colors on the cover because there's a lot of really beautiful colors and I couldn't work out how I wanted to do it. So I just sort of did a pattern, although I stuffed up the pattern at one point. It doesn't matter, it still looks good. Uh, I did one for Role Model by Rachel Reed, which is a MM hockey romance. This one was really hard because the colors are really neutral and it just I just had to pick colors and there was yellow in the title, which I then followed up with Rookie Mistake, which is another MM hockey title. But this one I'm really pleased with how it turned out because the cover has a player in their jersey and it's a white jersey with yellow and black banding on it. So that one I was able to re replicate really easily. I also did Face Off by Tegan Hunter. I ended up using the cover of, or the alternate cover, which is just a skyline, but it's all done in blues and white. So this one's not perfect, but you know, it's the same color scheme-ish. And then the last one that I did was my Heart Song bracelet, which is green, but has the sort of yellow, orange, red, russet red of um, one of the wolves. So now I have this many five and six star bracelets. It's kind of a, a mixture of last year's and this year's five and six star reads, but I will add to it and I just need to get something to store them all in. They're kind of pretty and this just keeps me occupied. Also, it's a total sensory thing. Like this is one of those hobbies that I picked up 
totally randomly because I'm like, was it yes because of the Taylor Swift sort of friendship bracelet things? Yes, but I don't want to make Taylor Swift ones. But I did, couldn't get out of my head that I wanted to make bracelets, so... I ordered a bunch of stuff. Now I have a box of beading supplies. And honestly, like they don't take really long to make. Once I get an idea in my head, I'm pretty, pretty good at sort of going through. I've, I have just ordered some more vowel letters because I'm going through them. I'm pretty happy with how these are turning out. So getting back to what feasts at night. I mean, this was a reread for me. So I knew that the audio was, well, I was going to enjoy the story regardless, but I actually really enjoyed the audio narration for it. So I have been consuming most of T. Kingfisher's books via audio, which is, unusual for me. Cloud Quinn did a really good job with the narration and uh, I actually feel like I understood the story a little bit more this time because I'd read it once and now I was listening to it again. The last part of the story was the part that I didn't quite grasp the first time that I read it so listening to it again really helped and I'm really disappointed that I can't talk about the other audiobook. St. Martin's Press needs to get their, themselves together. They just need to sort out their nonsense but yeah I will finish that one later on and you know eventually when the boycott is over I can talk about the book. So yes I think I'm going to just chill out for a little bit, take a break, watch some YouTube and recalibrate a little bit. Maybe think about how I'm going to store all of these different bracelets. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave headphone emojis for audiobooks and thank you again to Tracy for the suggestion to do a tri chapter audiobook edition. This was kind of fun and yeah if you have a suggestion for another tri chapter style vlog or a theme like I said I think the next one I might do might be my special editions just because I need to get through a few of them but feel free to suggest any other theme that you might have because I'm totally up for all of that have a wonderful day no matter where you are in the world and I will see you in my next video thanks so much for watching bye everyone